Hi, I'm Michael Crusoe, and I'm going to talk about the Common Workflow Language Project and the standards that uh, we've made. Uh, ju just briefly about me, since I'm going to be here all week. I'm an American living in Eastern Europe and Lithuania. Uh, and I have a background in both system administration and software engineering and uh, microbiology and bioinformatics. Um, and uh, in addition to leading the CWL project, I've been working on the European Open Science Cloud, uh, Elixir, and Asterix, and uh, through my friends helping out when I can with the data commons, maybe with just emotional support. Um, so we're going to try this video and see if it works. So uh, the CWL is a community-based standard for describing data analysis workflows. In fact, it was born at a biohackathon of sorts, the BOSC Code Fest in 2014. So this event is uh, very close to my heart. I'm really happy to be here uh, this week. Um, it began as a vendor and academic neutral. So it wasn't a single vendor saying, uh, we're now the standard. Uh, it was everybody coming together and building together. Um, and while it came from bioinformatics, we designed for many domains of science, and we see CWL used in radio astronomy, uh, hydrology, uh, and high energy physics as well. CWL helps move uh, any unstructured uh, workflow to a way that can be run in multiple environments um, because it's very declarative and well described. Um, so uh, we, logos are fun. We, we see our co-founders uh, at the top. Uh, I'm, I'm one of four. I'm actually not the inventor. Um, but um, along the way, uh, many bioinformatics uh, big names have, have used and contributed to the project. Uh, and now we're seeing, as I mentioned, usage beyond that. So like, why do standards? We love, you know, standards can be nice, but um, they take real work, as we know, with, with these various efforts. Um, and when it comes to workflows and executing our scientific work, running all these great tools we've seen in the talks today, and we'll see more later, um, the reality is is people do run their software in many places, uh, and hopefully on different continents, and uh, want to collaborate across them. So standards help us achieve this. Just a little bit, though, the standards take time. So I said we started in 2014. In 2015, the first uh, product came out making use of it. In 2016, our 1.0 release uh, it came out, and then the GA4GH built on top of that for their WES um, uh, approach. Um, we refined it the next year. And then this year, the big news is that IBM has joined our, our vendor and uh, implementation community uh, with their open source plus commercial product on top of LSF. And uh, it's been a joy to see CWL be useful to the NIH Data Commons and the European Open Science Cloud pilot. Um, CWL helps us turn all our great programs and you know those other programs that other people wrote that are, I guess, good but maybe not so easy to use, into well-defined functions that we can combine together in workflows. Um, and of course, Docker software containers have changed everybody's lives. And so now you can even write and edit these on Windows machines uh, using Docker for Windows. So um, the, these, uh, the well-defined nature of CWL allows us to kind of separate ourselves into two modes, or 
maybe with our collaborators. One part of us gets to focus on doing the science, doing the analysis. How do we use these tools? What choices are we making? Why this model or that threshold, right? That our science brain. And then another part of us gets to separately focus on how to run our tools and workflows efficiently. How maybe to save time or save money or ideally both. Um, and CWL as a language and as an object model has many features to uh, enable the, both groups to be successful. Um, data locality is one of them. The uh, last slide was about uh, the resources needed to, to run a tool. We we'll hear, might hear more about this later from other speakers. Um, and uh, you know, if you've heard, you may have heard about software containers, but maybe at your institute you're not running them yet. Maybe you've heard about Singularity or Docker, and there's this new thing called UDocker. So uh, please come and talk to me about this. You can run software containers anywhere. Uh, so I just want to promote this UDocker project uh, that allows this to happen. Uh, as I mentioned, there's many uh, implementations of CWL. It really is this kind of common space for different workflow engines that may target different platforms or different audiences. Some provide a web interface or a graphical GUI or just our command line. Um, some you know, target Kubernetes or something more simple. So you've got lots of choices there. You know, a little example of like why why go through this effort is uh, a project I did with the European Bioinformatics Institute, where they took nearly ten thousand lines of code in three plus languages. None of that code was scientific code. It was merely to run the programs. So ten thousand lines of code to run code, and we there was all kind of you know this happens. I, I suspect many of you might have a pile of code that looked like this at your institute and convert it to the standardized format, uh, uh, much smaller, and then we can, we can visualize it. Um, we can, uh, you know, there's like a sub-workflow, we can organize it better, we can label it, and run it multiple places. And so even from a management perspective, or understanding what we've built, or to explain it to somebody else, so this is not just about rerunning, it's about reusing and sharing, and, uh, and knowing what's going on. Uh, extensibility is very important to us. So CWL is not the, not the end, it's the beginning. It continues to refine and improve. And we love working with open source, academic, commercial projects to do this. Um, and with other standards efforts as well. Uh, some of the use cases for CWL are not just for making our own lives more productive, but also running contests, or maybe uh, providing access to protected data. We can't give out the data, but maybe you can give us your workflow and we'll run it for you. Um, I think of big interest to this community is that linked data has always been very important to the CWO community. You can, uh, even with the reference runner, you can get a JSON LD version of a CWO workflow that when we talk about file formats or additional metadata, we've supported uh, linked data for a long time. And we look forward to further exploiting and building upon this. I'm going to highlight some related standards efforts uh, beyond the GA4GH. Include um, as we are building these commons and cloud efforts uh, all over the world, we need to think about how people move their data in and out, how we archive data and software, any of these even figures and, and, and tables. And so I really suggest looking at the researchobjects.org uh, effort for this. And in fact, we've we went and did some trial work with CWL, bringing the two together and seeing what that looks like. It's one of my favorite standards because it's, um, it builds upon other standards. It's actually a very thin standard, but it's thought through a lot of great ideas. And another one that may be of interest for those doing clinical or commercial regulatory work of uh, drug devices is biocompute objects, which began in the US with the Food and Drug Administration and is now going through an IEEE standardization process. Uh, is, this would really benefit not just from review from a Japanese perspective, um, but um, some uh, uh, leadership and uh, opinions there. Um, so for the, the hackathon, I propose to uh, work on some new features for CWL, and, but really happy to share with others uh, and to teach. Um, in my last few moments, I want to make a pitch, though, for another event 
Uh, so I said I live in Vilnius, Lithuania, and in March I'm hosting a small uh, sprint about packaging and containerization. Uh, flights are actually pretty cheap from Tokyo, and it's only 3,100 yen a night for accommodation. So please come out and join us. And uh, it's not just for Debbie and Conda, Gwix, everybody's welcome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank <laughs> you.